Be careful, John. Life is a daring adventure. <laughs> or nothing at all. I'm Christina. We are all. And this is John. Together we just packed up our lives. Christina Castalos joins me now. Put our careers on hold to sail around Australia. Oh, this is so you boat under the river. In our new home, Takana, a 50 foot Janot Sun Odyssey. Yay! She needed some work, but now we're ready. We're going through the heads. For the real adventure to begin. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. And thanks for joining our crew. You've joined us at the right time. After a false start, a lockdown, and $40,000 in upgrades and maintenance, we're sailing to Kana out of Melbourne's Sandringham Yacht Club without knowing when or if we'll ever be back. Away. What an awesome feeling. We have been waiting for this moment for two and a half months now. We were farewelled by our friends, which was so special and emotional because we don't have any family here in Melbourne. So in front of us, we're in company with a vessel called Skyfall. And on board is Tracy and BA. This is obviously our first, our very, very first attempt through the heads. Once we're out of Port Phillip Bay, it'll be a two to three day non-stop 260 nautical mile sail to Bermagui. So I've got my boots, I've got my big, thick jacket, and I've got my thermals and also a mid layer. And as I gear up, hair up, no makeup, I say goodbye to my old life, and job. It will be the fabulous, the gorgeous Kate Sobrano who joins us live right now. How lucky are we to have her here? Where are we? <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> Caught up in the moment, I was feeling pretty excited until the first of four dramas unfolded. Be careful, John. The Spinnaker Halyard got away. Oh. Just be careful, John. Oh, that was close. This is what happened. And I was like, oh, bugger that, I'm probably not going to use it, so I'll go for it and put them back on the lifeline. And just as I got it on the lifeline, um, there was a wave and it slipped out of my hand, and the halyard was like flying around with the metal hook on the end, <laughs> like, a, like a wrecking ball. Not that we use those anyways, the pole topper and the spinnaker halyard, but um, so worst case scenario, if we just pull them up, we'd be the end of the world. But yeah, lesson learned there. And you could be bad, but for a second there, Christina and I were like dodging it. And like, you thought I'd gone overboard. I was like asking Christina to like let it out a bit to lower it. And I did. And then and she did. And then I looked back and she wasn't on the in the cockpit. And I'm like yelling out like Christina, like thinking I should go downstairs. And she didn't hear me. I started like yelling really loudly. She still didn't come. I'm like, she's gone overboard already. We're like two miles out of out of the arena. And she just she'd gone downstairs. And didn't tell me. So we've learned that lesson too. You gotta tell each other when you're going down below. <laughs> Bass Strait, notorious for gales and rough seas. Is it? So we're pushing through two knots of current now. Wow, that's so crazy. See the water to your left? See yeah. it's all weird on top? Imagine, <laughs> imagine coming through here at the wrong time of day.
once we were out, it was time for Takana to spread her sails. Famous last words. Just trying to get some rest. It's been a crazy night. Poor John was at the helm the entire time. I can't really see anything, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear anything. We had a few battery issues, and so autopilot occasionally will just completely disengage. You have been sailing all night. And poor John has been at the helm for like 18 hours. So when we turned off the engine, uh, after an hour of just sailing, we'd have some battery warnings. And then all of a sudden, the autopilot would just disengage. It is pitch black. There is no moon. No stars. It was a bit rainy. There was a big swell. But the captain and crew need to eat. First night. We are going to be just making a simple soup. And when I say making, I mean heating up. So, bow, chicken corn, or like a vegetable. Did you want minestrone or chicken and corn? Uh, chicken and corn, I think, please. Oh, this is riveting, I'm sure. One thing that's really annoying is John didn't buy two soups of the same flavor he bought one soup of each flavor this would have been easy if you bought two packets of each flavor so that we can have dinner together so it looks like john's gonna have chicken and corn soup tonight and i'm probably gonna have minestrone who does that of hardening up to do. I'm babe, does it matter there's no butter in your bread? What's that? There's no butter on your bread, is that okay? That's fine. I tried to get some sleep. I actually got sick. <laughs> but I'm feeling a lot better now. That's until we hit a waypoint and we couldn't furl the head sail away. The furling line came off the furler. John's now up front. It had wrapped tightly around the force day. For 20 minutes, John was at the bow, going up and down, trying to unravel it. Yeah, that was, that was really gnarly. And John was just bracing himself at the bow, near the bow sprit there, near the anchor, just trying to wedge this flathead screwdriver in anyway I think I'm gonna get him to explain it because he won't explain it well because he'll just be like oh it wasn't that bad but it was for me it was really hectic and I was back here just keeping an eye on him just making sure that he was okay and that he didn't end up in the water or like my worst fear is that his tether will keep him on board but he'll just pull over the side of the bow and just be dragged in the water. That's like my worst fear. So I made sure I knew where the knife was. I made sure I knew what I was gonna do if we had the man overboard situation. It was just going over my head, around and around in circles. Just wanted to make sure that I was ready for whatever was going to unfold. Yeah, 
a little bit shitting out here. It's raining and cold. Excellent. Your tea just refills on its own. <laughs> How are you feeling? Pretty good. No, honestly. Excellent. Are you looking forward to where we're going? Yep. Spirits were a little low, but John knows how to boost morale with music. Like even the seals were happy for us. Hey, BA. My baby, keeping me nice and warm. <laughs> My hot water bottle. After 48 hours at sea, we were finally out of the Bass Strait and about to cross the New South Wales state border. Getting down to cross it's very close in another couple of hours. Gabo Island is over 20 miles or something. Yeah. What's it like out there? It's really nice. You see the New South Wales coast and the sunshine and this big white house up there. Come up and have a look. Well, this is a very random dinner. We are no longer going to Bermagui. We're just going to continue straight forward through to Sydney. Uh, we are a bit sleep deprived, but we're taking advantage of these light winds and the good weather that we have um, to cook a nice meal. Bit of a random meal though, and I'm just making this. Bring this to Bermagui. Bring the action over. Alright, I'll show you the final product. Get some sweet potato on there, corn, greens, super random. These are Angus beef grass fed sausages. Let's see what the captain thinks, hey? It is come down from, uh, I'm filming you, filming me. Hi Paul. It's John's dad on the phone. Let me take a quick photo. One, two, three. <laughs> Gosh, I can't remember the last time I had sausages. morning I thought I would jump on here quickly and give you an update we were going to head to Bermagui and then we decided to just keep on going all the way to Sydney we just thought why not we are on a bloody roll <laughs> well it's kind of what happened um, John was like Christina let's just keep on going to Sydney the weather's really great and then BA who's in Skyfall actually texts John at exactly the same time. I was like, hey John, do you mind if we just keep on going to Sydney as well? And we're like, yep, cool, amazing. I wanted to give a massive shout out to John who did the 11.30 p.m. through to 5.30 a.m. shift this morning. And then he just left the sunrise. To me, what a legend. He's starting to feel a little bit run down this morning. So I'm going to do the 5.30 till midday shift is in that bad really just answering a heap of your questions from Instagram we did a Q&A on there so that's passing the time wonderfully the first time John and I ever sailed this boat by ourselves together was when we left Melbourne so yeah, we probably, I don't even know if we should actually tell people that. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think that's going to make this card. Like, but we haven't had a choice because we had the Melbourne lockdown. We weren't able to sail to Kana and we weren't able to take her out because she had no rigging. The rigging was getting replaced for like four weeks plus, five weeks. And then she was on a hard stand. We obviously had sailed to Kana with other people before. But I have to mention as well that we had BA in Skyfall just 
one nautical mile or two nautical miles ahead of us. If we did not take this weather window, Takana would still be in Melbourne right now and we wouldn't be able to get her for months on end. So we had to take this opportunity and I'm so glad because it paid off. Takana to Skyfall. And I bet by now you're wondering what the fourth drama was that unfolded. We have whales, we have whales in front of us. Sorry I had to wait you, but oh my god. A ten? I'm a, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. I just went 10 degrees right. I just went 10 degrees right. What the actual heck? 